Africa Front. My name is Raymond Alqua. Tonight, the spotlight in the, is on the Social Security and National Insurance Trust. We probe the issues of pension right from what's supposed to be the standard, the fairness in the system, the current indexation issues, and their recent release suggesting that we have suspended in some form or extended in some other way the SIM card and its registration and the connections between the NIA and also the SNIT identity number. All of the issues of SNIT is what's on the front banner in today's edition. You welcome back. This is Affront. My name is Raymond Dalqua. Tonight, we are delving deeper into the latest happenings on the front of the Social Security and National Interim Trust. This is also important because, I mean, I need to read you a comment. A comment that was put on Facebook a couple of hours ago, prior to this conversation, and it puts it in the perspective of how people believe and understand pensions in this republic. It's a comment that says, is a state pension system which has such wide gap between the lowest paid and the highest paid. How can it be fair? This is something, there is something fundamentally wrong with someone working 30 years and taking a lump sum that cannot even build a one bedroom house and being paid monthly stipends at levels barely capable uh, of meeting their monthly needs. Something is off. But we know in the last two days or so, um, there was an announced increment in the monthly pensions for 2022 by 10%. I'm sure you know by now that even salaries were increased by less than 7%. My guest today is the man who determines that particular increment and is the man who's running the unit. He is that MIT trained state boss, Dr. John Oforitin Kwanya. Welcome. Thank you very much, Ray. I hope you are doing well. I'm doing very well. Happy New Year to uh, you. Happy New Year to you too. It's been a long time since we spoke. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. It, More than a you year, I think. have been in a lot of trouble for a very long time. That's where the problem really is. Well, you know, I, I try to stay out of trouble. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I try to stay out of trouble. Yes. Um, now, I was talking about the possible disparities that many identify in the system. But let me drill down to what informed this 10% recent increase in announcement. Well, uh, Ray, uh, first of all, let me say, uh, let me thank you for inviting me to your show in the studio. <clears throat> and I want to also say a very uh, good evening and a happy new year to all your viewers, uh, including uh, my cherished uh, pensioners and contributors. And uh, above all, I guess we are in a new year, so, you know, the psalmist says unless... Uh, the Lord builds the house, yeah. those who do so labor in vain. So we have to uh, seek God's grace and divine uh, guidance to help us through the new year. So having said that, let me come to your substantive question as to what informed the 10% the increase in the pay of uh, pensioners. You know, Ray, <clears throat> Pensioners are on what we call fixed income, meaning they are not working anymore. We assume they are not getting any other uh, income from gainful employment. And so the uh, uh, income is predicted and it's fixed. And every year we have to ensure that um, the monies that they receive, the purchasing power of that money is preserved. That's, that's a fancy way of saying that um, whatever they were able to buy, whatever goods and services they were able to buy last year, with the amount of money that we're going to give them this year, they will be able to buy the same. That basically tries to adjust for inflation. So that is what the exercise that we go through uh, every year and then increase uh, pensions accordingly. I see. Now, there's a point that needs to be made about this. Will this 10% affect all pensioners? Um, and one can single out a grouping that's pension, but sometimes people don't consider like invalidity pension, for example. Yes. So this 10% increase would affect all pensioners who were on our payroll mm -hmm. last year. 
How about those who are retiring this year? So those who are retiring this year are going to, they are the new entrants. Okay. So they, when you are uh, getting your pension, you come into the scheme at the legislated uh, um, uh, rate or le legislated uh, pay, pension pay that you are supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Then next year, when we are adjusting for inflation, then whatever you are getting will then be uh, uh, adjusted for inflation. So when you are, when you are going on pension, okay. you are coming to receive new money. So that is like your starting pay. Okay. So your starting pay cannot be yeah. indexed mm -hmm. retroactively. Interesting. Right? Now, th there's a question on the minds of many about uh, the, 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 there was a, there's reference to some 9.8% which will be received as a flat rate mm -hmm. and a flat amount of 3.44 cities. So when you say 10%, how does it fit into all of this conversation? Okay. So, so what, what, we, what we're saying is that the amounts that we paid last year, the total pool of, uh, that we paid for the total pool of pensions, that amount is going to be increased by 10%. So we use the 10% to set up a pool. Okay. Now that pool has to be given to uh, pensioners, qualified pensioners. Now, our primary objective in doing this exercise is to make sure that the purchasing power of all pensioners are preserved. And that means we have to look at inflation and make sure that everybody's pensions are adjusted, uh, at least that everybody gets inflation. So inflation for uh, 2021, the year that just passed, is uh, projected to be 9.68%, okay. right? And then looking into the future, looking into 2022, I think from the Minister of Finance's budget, uh, inflation is targeted to be around 8%. Okay. Right? So we then gave every pensioner an increment of 9.68% mm -hmm. to cater for inflation. inflation then the 0.32% uh, that is left because the total pool that we set aside was 10%. That is distributed uh, flat in a flat rate among all pensioners. So basically, we convert that zero, the amount deriving from that 0.32 percent into you know cities and pesos and share it equally among all pensioners. So it is the 9.68 percent rate that is ad, uh, uh, that is applied to every pensioner's pay, plus the 0.32 percent which we've converted into cities and pesos shared among everybody that is the 3.44 uh, ghana cities that constitute the totality of the 10 percent what does this mean what this means is that the effect of this is that even though the total pool is 10 percent meaning that total pensions together is increased by 10 percent the people that are on the low end uh, the people that were receiving, let's say, 300 Ghana cities as an entry pension, okay. they are going to get 10.83% increase because for them, three cities, 44 pesos means it's a lot okay. uh, on that base. That's true. And then the one who is at the higher end uh, like will read. Uh, I'm glad that catches your attention and I yeah, hope that we'll get to talk in, about it's it. It's in everybody's mind. Yes. My next question to you. And that tells everybody you that there's. want to be in that group. Very good. In that we all want to avoid that territory too. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that once that catches your attention, mm -hmm. then that means we, the next question will be how do I get there? Right? <laughs> but, so, let me, so let me finish the thought here Very so well. that the guy who's at the far end will get a total increment of about 9.68. Percent because for him, three cities, 44 pesos doesn't really change anything, right? Now, the effect of this is that about 67 percent of the people on our pension payroll will get an increment that is higher than 10 percent, okay? Right? So that is how the redistribution thing comes up. And that redistribution th uh, uh, policy is just to make sure that the people at the higher end, at the lower end, are a bit cushioned from the solidarity principle of social security. And so that's why we have it like that. And so that's your 10%.
when we started the conversation, there was a question I asked, and I actually asked the question based on a comment on Facebook. That question about how is it possible that any social security system mm. has such wide disparity between the RSNS and the lowest earners? And that's the point I'm coming to. But I'm asking it this way because I want to know why one person is able to earn 142000 and on the other side, some are just taking on three, three, two cities. Okay. So the short answer to your question is that the scheme is set up such that you get what you put in. Mm -hmm. You get what you put in. But you talk about cushions. Yeah. So, so, so I'll tell you where the cushions also come okay. in. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So the scheme is set up such that it's a contributory scheme, right? It's an, think about it, it's an insurance scheme. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why we call Social Security a National Insurance Trust. What do we insure? We insure occupational income. Other insurance companies may insure property, your mm -hmm. car, for example, right? Mm -hmm. You go there and you say, hey, I am driving a Mercedes, and they take the details and they give you a premium and say, pay this premium, and then when something happens, a uh, qualified claim, you can, you can come and lodge a claim, and you know what they are going to give you, right? If you are a comprehensive insurance, they will replace your car. If you are third party, they will give, you know? So you know exactly from the beginning what you are going to get if you um, lodge a claim, right? So we insure occupational income. We are not an investment company. People shouldn't think of SNIT that we are an investment company. Think of us as an insurance company for a second, where we insure incomes. So, if you come to me every month and you say, uh, SNIT, this is how much I am making, okay, from my occupation, and this is what I want you to insure for me, we will tell you that the premium is 11%. I see. Right? Mm -hmm. So you come and you pay the premium, which is 11%. And that ensures this salary that you uh, have declared to us. And if you do that over time, you stand, and now I'm getting to the claims part. Okay. You stand a chance of earning currently up to 60% of the highest salaries that you came to insure with us. So come to us, pay 11% of what you are declaring to us. And if you do it long enough, if you do it for 35 years, you know, people say, I'm working for 35 years. I've been working for 20 years. All that that 35 years mean is 60%. So whenever you hear somebody says, I've worked for 35 years, the number that should come into your head is all that it means is 60%. Okay. 60% of what? 60% of the salaries you came to declare to us that you want to insure. So, we, so you're going to get... Declare. Yes. So you're going to... And, and when you declare it, then you pay the premium on it. And that is what people call the SNIT contribution. Oh, okay. That's right? Yeah. So you pay the premium on it, and then that entitles you to up to 60% if you've done your... 35 years for life as an entry, 60% for entry mm -hmm. as the entry pay, and then you start to enjoy this indexation thing that we do. Every okay, year. it's interesting that that is happening. So, how much would I have to be paying as, uh, how do you call it, the contribution? This mm -hmm. is the term that we all are uh, used to, mm -hmm. to get 142,000. Okay, so, so in the case that you are referring to, mm -hmm. you know, there used to be. Uh, a law, uh, the SNIT law uh, goes through changes. Uh, prior to 2010, the law that was in place was called PNDC Law 247. And that PNDC Law 247 did not have uh, any cap on how much of your earnings you can come and insure with us. Oh, I see. So there was no cap. There was nothing like a maximum insurable earning. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So, and that PNDC Law 247 allowed you to get up to 80% of the highest salaries that you not insured 60. with that. Not 60. Okay. Now, it's come down to 60 under the new law, which is Act 766, mm -hmm. because part of the pension pay has been shifted from 
uh, SNET to what we call the tier two. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now yeah. your pension okay. pay yeah. eh, when you're on retirement is coming from two sources. There is a SNET part, which is now up to 60%, right, for life. Mm -hmm. And then there is a lump sum part, which you go and get from your tier two. But when there was no lump sum that was being paid from somebody else, somewhere else under 247, and the, um, uh, there was no cap also on the, amount, the uh, earnings, the highest earnings that you can come and insure. There, if you came and you declared legitimate incomes, and we verify these incomes, you cannot come and just, you can't go and take monies from the bank and come and give it to us, oh, snit, I, this is it, okay. right? If you come and you insure those legitimate incomes, then uh, in this particular case, and you've done it long enough, you stand up to earn 80% of the highest uh, salaries that you earned in, the la in your best three years. So you can do the calculation, right, as to what 80% would correspond, you know, what salary that would have had to be, annual salary, such that it will map to, let's say, I think this, uh, we started, this person went on pension maybe three years ago or two years ago. So you de-escalate that and see what that entry pay is. You can, you can see that. But I can show you that in Ghana here, can any public in, get up in Ghana here? The SNIT scheme, the, yes. the SNIT scheme is for all workers in Ghana. Yes, including those who are self-employed, including those who are working in the private sector, including those who are working in the public you know sector. The I'm asking this, no, right? I'm just I'm, I'm answering your question. <laughs> okay, I get. I it. am answering your question. Yeah. Mm. So, there are people who are working in Ghana here, mm. who are earning legitimate incomes okay. that are very high. Oh, I see. And you know some of them. I see. Uh -huh. So if such people do not drink the Kool-Aid, that Kool-Aid we used to say that as for the SNIT scheme is so bad, when you go, they just give you 300 Ghana CDs. I'm sure you heard that narrative before. Yeah, I, I, Until you saw 140,000, you didn't look at SNIT any different. You were like, oh, wow. That's what I'm telling, telling well, you. Right, because I want 142,000. Previously, previously, what SNIT would put out is that, oh, we... We give a minimum pension of 300. And to many people, that is not inspiring enough. But I remember when I, just about a couple of years ago, when I told my people that, put out there what we do. The same scheme. And this num high number started coming out. We started publishing a league table. All of a sudden, people started looking at a snit As anew. something worth doing. Anew. So, yes. for example... On the 9th of April 2015, Franklin Kujo said, mm. it is better to invest in livestock farming than to pay your money into a SNIT, a contributor scheme. Would you think that he would change his mind today? What has changed to convince I, him? I hope so. I hope he will change his mind. But let me add something that would maybe, if he's still not convinced, will change his mind. Mm. SNIT. Eh? It's a long-term investment, right? Mm -hmm. When you are doing, you are, you are contributing to SNET or when you are insuring your uh, earnings with SNET, this is over a long period. You start when you are maybe 20, 21, 22, and you're going to continue through till 60. So if you're doing your livestock farming, you better make sure that consistently for over 35 years, how is that possible? I, I'm just saying, cons you have to make sure that consistently over 35 years, you are not getting any food and, food and mouth disease. Okay. Nah, nobody is stealing your sheep or your whatever. There is no bushfire. You know all the risks, the point, yeah. right? Okay. And then... So you're just saying that there's lower risk rates. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for SNET, mm -hmm. SNET has been around for since you were born. Yeah. Have you ever heard that SNET has defaulted? In paying pensions? I have not so far. Right. And, and if you talk to pensioners today, the monies come as clockwork. Every third Thursday of the month, ka -ching, you get the alert. You get it from your bank. Right? So from a risk point of view, mm -hmm. we will say that we will offer superior credit for long-term uh, risk management. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when you take, I told you the premium is what, 11%. So if you are making 300 Ghana cities, uh, 3,000 Ghana cities, what you're giving to SNET every month is 33 Ghana cities. 
33 okay. Ghana cities. So it is this 33 Ghana cities that you have to uh, accumulate eh, over the years. Now, if you do this long enough for over 35 years, and let's say your salary didn't increase, right? Then when you go on pension, you are going to get 60% of 3,000 Ghana cities. That is 6318, 1,800 Ghana cities as an entry pay for life. And that is very important, for life. For as long as you live, you're like stock farming. When you do it and you get to your age 60 and you start chopping that money and you live till you are 100, and currently I have people on the payroll, pension payroll, who are 91, 92, 93, right? You better make sure that that farming is, stock, when you are even not there to look after the farm, that you have good enough people who will be truthful and honest and make sure that they are not chopping your, uh, they are not uh, diverting your funds to pay you consistently until the good Lord calls you home. So with the SNIT scheme, once you ins make this insurance and you qualify for pension, you can go to sleep and say and know that you continue to receive these payments until when it stops, you will not even be aware that it has stopped because by that time you are with your maker. But the other city is small. Okay, so small is, so, is, so small, small. small is relative. To make a proper living in the Republic of Ghana, okay, so, in Accra, in this small, if I 300 city, might not get you through two weeks. Well, let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who expects to make more money when he's on pension? than when he's in active service? Not necessarily. It depends on whether you have made enough investments and all of okay. that. So, so, so you agree with me mm -hmm. that the monies that you are making when you are in active service is going to be higher than the monies that you make when you're on pension. Yeah. Right? Okay. So let me tell you this. Today. Today. 20, 22% of the people coming to SNIT every month to ensure their salaries for life. 22% mm -hmm. of the people in Ghana who come to SNIT every month to ensure their salaries come and say that the salary that they want to ensure, that they are living on now whilst they are in active, ser active, active service, it's 500 Ghana cities or less. 22%. 22%. One fifth of the people that... They say that they want to insure 500 Ghana cities or less, meaning that their lifestyle today that they are living on whilst they are in active service is 500 Ghana cities or less. So let me take it that you are making 500 Ghana cities. I'm saying today some people are contributing like that. And let's take that one of these people is one of these people who have been contributing for 35 years. So he's entitled to 60%. What is 60% of 500 Ghana cities? 6, 5, 30. Yeah. That's 300 Ghana cities. Yeah. Right? So that person eh, is going to have an entry pension of 300 Ghana cities. Now, you may say 300 Ghana cities is very small. Now, but that's what, how much you put in. Was 500 Ghana cities, he said he was working, and that is what he had. That was his lifestyle. Yeah. So if you are saying that he had some money from elsewhere, okay, then that money from elsewhere can supplement that. But with respect to what he came to ensure, that is what he's going to get. One more thing. Let's say that it is, and I said 22% are insuring 500 or less, right? So there are people who come into us and they are insuring 400 Ghana cities. What is 6 for? 24. 24. So that person is going to get, supposed to get 240 Ghana cities. But SNET with all its largesse, will say, okay, 240 Ghana cities, no, no, we will bump you up to 300 Ghana cities. So you now you see where SNET is doing the, uh, okay, the I cushioning? I see. Right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the concept of you, when you are working and you are driving your Mercedes, going to that insurance company and saying that, oh, you are driving a Kia Picanto, Instead of the Mercedes. Instead of Mercedes. And insuring the Kia Picanto. You think you're not going to have an accident. So, and you need that paper just so that you can drive your car around, right? 
and so you say a Kia Picanto and then you insure it and you get your insurance sticker and everything, right? Then when that accident happens, and in, the, in our case, that accident is definitely going to happen because it is an event that would occur. You would retire. You would retire. So when that thing happens and you go to the insurance company and you say, okay, I'm coming to make a claim. We'll look into the book and they see that, oh, Mr. Aqua, uh, you, I'm really very sorry that your Kia Picanto got stolen. Yeah. Uh, by the way. When I've been uh, driving the Benz. Uh, yes, by the way, here is uh, your deductible and then here is uh, the balance for you to salvage your Kia Picanto. Then you will say, oh, but when I was working, I was made driving a Mercedes. You, you get the point. I get your point. Uh -huh. so, so ours is it's just as simple as that. There's something that came up during the current conversation with you, Tag. Mm. There were people who were complaining that but you, you are paid well. I mean, you teachers, professors, you are paid well. Then they said, no, our base pay is five or 6000 To us, that is low. And for being a professor, I've been through a lot. You cannot... And I need you to draw the line carefully for me. You do not add allowances, right? No. So when I'm being paid, what I should be asking myself consistently in the office is what exactly is my base pay? That's it. Yes. And, and you know, for me, I, I think uh, sometime last year, mm -hmm. I was invited to a, a labor conference. And I think um, I made the comment that to labor, so I said, that, look, when you are negotiating eh, salaries, consider pensions, take pensions into account. I see. There are people who would say, pay me everything now. Eh? As for retirement, uh, you know, it will take, tomorrow will take care of itself. Yeah. Right? And so there are people who would say, oh, uh, the thing that you have to take to SNET is taxable and whatever. But allowance, some allowances are not taxable, okay. so shift everything there, and you know, allowance. slice and dice it, and then, you know, call it, you understand? And so they do not pay attention to what they are going to get when they go on retirement. And I think this is something that we all, you know, I mean, workers have to think about. We are mostly told that, is it five, is it almost, I mean, the, what percentage of workers in this country are currently on the SNES scheme? Well, uh, right now, my active contributor list is about 1.7 million. Mm -hmm. Let's say that in this country, we have population is about 30 million. So yeah. let's say we have about, you know, 14 million uh, workers. Uh, workers or so, you know. So that's uh, maybe 11%. 11%. Right? Something like that, right? So a little over 10% yes. are the people who are on the SNES scheme. Yes. These are predominantly public sector workers. Not necessarily. Right now, there are, it's, it's tipping over. There are more private sector workers really? on the scheme than public sector. Right now, we have, I think, about 52, 48. How about those in the informal sector? That is a challenge, right? Okay. There, we don't have much, right? And the informal sector actually includes, I like to call it the self-employed. Yeah. Right? Okay. And, um, you know, I think what has happened is that in the past, if you do a straw poll and even today, and you ask people, uh, people who contributes to SNIT, they will tell you that as for SNIT, we think it's for government workers. That's true. In fact, even your question to me just a few minutes ago yeah. was presupposing that there were more public sector Second workers, workers which is quote unquote government workers than private That's workers. True. And now I'm telling you that there are more private sector workers on the SNIT scheme than public sector workers. Why so? And so the informal sector people, mm -hmm. or the self-employed, thought that they were not qualified to be, to be part of the scheme. There were people who didn't think that if they were self-employed, they uh, can come and ensure their um, uh, earnings with SNIT. Now we are letting them know, if they didn't know before, that they too deserve a pension. Yeah. And there is a framework for them to take advantage of the SNED pension scheme. So um, we are going to go out. In fact, this year, one of my uh, major 
um, you but know. Before you go out, mm. I mean, the mostly quotes almost eighty percent of the workers in the informal sector. Correct. If that is so. What percentage of that 80% is on your SNES scheme? Oh, certainly some will be on, right? Yes, it's a de minimis percentage. Right. I, I, you know, less than 1%. I see. Yeah. Is it that bad? But they make money a lot. I mean, if you go to... Some of them make more money than you and I combined. I agree. Right? But they think that... I mean, so, not, not you and I combined. You are well, in there. You and I combined. <laughs> <laughs> we probably make more money than I do. Oh, it is very much uh, not the case. The, 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 the person who makes 142000 <laughs> yeah. uh, a month mm -hmm. was not a SNIT director general. Really? That I can assure you. Was a person uh, in the private sector. A uh, person in the private sector. Oh, it made a lot more sense to me uh, than the... Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. So, so, so the, if, if people know, first of all, that if people know that the SNIT scheme is good, okay, right? Meaning if you shed that image or that narrative that, oh, as for SNIT, when you give them your money, you are wasting it. Yeah. Right? Then... But you know what that narrative is there, right? Because we've heard of things that SNIT has used money for. We get, really? Who makes this kind of investment? Yes. Who engages in this kind of act? Yes, Ray. Because we have seen it before. It's, it's in the news. It's, it's yes. all over the place. Yes. So why would any rational yes. person want to put more money there? Yes, it is disconcerting, but yeah. I'll tell you what a rational person should do. Yeah. A rational person, person should look at the SNIT scheme mm -hmm. and say, what is the value proposition? What do I put in and what do I get? And, 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 is it, and is it worth it? But they listen to news too. I hear you. I hear you. And that's why we have to go out there and kind of correct the narrative. So let's stay with the rational person. Yeah. The rational person, if properly educated, right, would know that the SNIT scheme is a contract. It's a defined benefit scheme. It says if you do A, you get B. When you are going to an insurance company to insure your car, do you look at what they are investing your premiums in? No, because SNIT has an outlook of uh, government relations no, and no, all of you that. You hold me on. And oh, we know oh. how we do with our government. No, for, for trust relations yes. we have with our government. So, 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 so SNIT has never defaulted, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you go to the insurance company, what do you look for? You look for his ability to pay their claims, right? That's true, yeah. They take your premiums, right? It's the same, and, and, the same and, way. And then they go and they invest it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Do you, do you worry about what they are investing in? They are doing. No, no, no. Yeah? You don't, right? No. Because you are... Actually, I do not care. Be, not, yeah. You do not care because you are focused on the, uh, the fact that when you go and you lodge your claim, that they will pay your okay. claim. Yeah. So I am asking Ghanaians, please, don't think of the SNIT scheme as an investment vehicle. Okay. Think of it as an insurance vehicle. Right? Ah, hold on. Hold on one ah, second. Let me land. possible. No, let me land. Let me land. To convince people that we are doing... With your let, money. Oh dear, because you, that's the question. You, you let me land. And with I, your and money. I, and then I will deal with it. Yes. Let me land first. Yeah. Right? Because I don't want people to throw away the baby with the bath water. I get your point. Right? Mm -hmm. So, just, you know, take your mind off that investment for a second. Like when you have that bad preacher. Yeah. And you then he says, I'm not going to go to church again. That's true. Right? So let's not get there. Right? And, and focus for a moment and say, if I put in this... This is what I am going to get for life, mm. okay? And look at the peace of mind and everything that you are going to get, right? If SNET were to make a windfall, you know, money today, and if you are a new entrant coming into the SNET scheme, you are applying for your pension benefits today, I, as Director General, cannot change the pension that you're going to get because it's legislated in law. Okay. Are you with me? I get you. Uh -huh. So when you are going to make that claim, that claim is not going to be affected whether Snit's investment is doing good or not doing good. What I have to worry about, I am the one who has to worry about whether the investment is doing well or not because I'm going to rely on that to make that to pay you. Right? I, okay. No, so, yes, as a public entity. So, we should and, not worry about what you do with no, the money. No, what I'm saying, you should worry about it, but don't let that deter you from, from joining the SNIT scheme. Hook or crook, I'll get my money. Hook or crook, you can claim your money. But now, with the I have to make sure. do, would I be getting more money if you were, so, let's say, I mean, in some people's eyes, doing more profitable investment? Yeah. If, if, if I was making more money, yeah. right? One, first of all, I cannot change your entry. Oh, I see. Huh? Your entry pay. So your prosperity does not affect me.
my prosperity will affect you in terms of my ability to pay your future claims. Oh, I see. And also, it may affect you in my ability to index your pensions annually, right? To make sure that you are keeping you up with inflation or a little bit more than inflation. But as to what you are going to get when you go on pension and you come and make your first claim, my prosperity today, until the law is changed, right? Mm -hmm. And the pension scheme rejects, cannot change your fortunes. I, but the good thing is that you should know that once you put in this, and this is what you are going to get when you make the claim, you are going to get it. My job now, and I'm going to go on a roadshow, to, is to show people okay. that the premiums that you pay, right? If you put it into a safe investment, and in our country, let's say a safe investment will be government treasury bills. Yeah. And you roll those investments every quarter. You are disciplined enough that your 33 Ghana cities or for your, your 300 Ghana cities that you are uh, uh, um, you know, uh, giving to SNET because you are making, uh, I don't know, 3,000 or 4,000. That 300 Ghana cities, every month you use it to buy a treasury bill. And then every quarter you roll it and you obtain the full T bill rate. You pay no fees, right? And you do that diligently until you retire at 60. And then uh, we, you compare that lump sum amount that you're going to get to what SNET will pay you. Okay, not even for life, oh, because I know SNET will pay you for life. But let's say SNET, but SNET is guaranteed, obligated to pay you or your beneficiaries for 15 years after you retire. Hook or crook, whether you're alive or not. Okay. SNET has to pay that amount. So when you take that amount, right, that, those 15 years of payments, and you look at what that amount is worth at the time when you retire. And you compare it to the accumulated value huh, of uh, your contributions. And you look at that ratio. If your accumulated value, and I did this uh, uh, you know, research just recently, taking real data from our pension uh, database. If that accumulated value is, let's say, 10,000 Ghana cities, there are people who are getting multiples of that. 10,000, some people may get 10 times that, some people may get 20 times that, okay. some people may get five times that, some people may get two times that. It all depends on how your salaries that you came to insure with us kind of changed, legitimately changed over your working life. So there is a strong value proposition for that the SNET scheme offers, meaning that you get value for your money. So if you can ensure more of your legitimate income with SNET, please do so because it will give you more than you can get in any other long-term secured investment. This is your own research. Mm. Can this be backed by any other institution? Send um, uh, any analyst okay. to but get I data. To whether no, no, this has been yes, to view to get any to get. We can we can because you can tell good stories yes, about yourself. We can anonymize. Oh, that you absolutely, not very bad. absolutely. And and for me, I wouldn't lie because yeah. I'm a. I'm a technocrat. No, the, the point I, is that yes. you're also smart, and we cannot put all our trust in your Absolutely. ability to Absolutely. So, not tell us things that are wonderful today. So, so I will challenge you yes. that we can anonymize pension data, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Because we, we cannot show you that this is Raymond Aqua okay. or whatever. But we can anonymize pension data for an independent, and, review. Uh, for an independent review. Okay, I, I get your point. But talk about uh, research, right? The, 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 there is this uh, growing benefit expenditure uh, point that's been made. The Africa Center for Retirement and Research has raised concerns about sustainability of the SNE scheme. You talked about what, whatever you do with the investment, you will still pay. Mm. But there are some who are not convinced SNET will live for a very long time. Is the scheme collapsing anytime soon? I would say, I'll say the answer is no. That's right? not a lifeline. Okay. So clearly, if you do not manage things well, yeah. right, things can collapse. Are we managing things well now? I would say that, yes. You, you believe so? I, I am convinced that 
you know, at least I can speak for myself. But what do you think about sustainability questions that are being raised? Yes, so there are sustainability issues. So mm -hmm. one of them have to do with, okay, uh, you know, I told you that the SNES scheme is the scheme that will say we'll pay you for life. That's true. So, and then I said that we are guaranteed to pay you for 15 years after you retire. Mm -hmm. So whether you are alive or not, uh, we will have to pay you. So, if you live to 100, and let's say there were two Raymond Alcres, you and your twin brother. No, no, I see so on social media. Right. So, uh, right. And, 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 oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's say you had a twin brother, and you all worked, had the same jobs, right? And you had the same salaries. And then you all retired. And your twin brother, unfortunately, died at 75. Snet would have paid him what is due him and that's it. Nothing, Snet will have no more obligation towards your twin brother's family or spouse or whatever, right? And then you continue to live till 100. And looking at how you are, I'm sure you're going to live for a long time. I'm hoping so. Yes. Um, you all put in the same amount of money because you're all working up to 60, right? Uh, earning the same amount of money. But we're obligated to pay you until 100. Okay. Right? Yeah. So for you, your cost to SNET. You know, I'm trying to drill down, right? It's, I know. I'm it's, trying to drill it's, down. It's, to, it's, you don't it, have money to pay me to, I guess, 100. Is that what you're saying? No. What I'm, I, I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> what I, I currently have people on my payroll who are 90. Oh, I see. On the SNIT payroll, mm -hmm. who is 90, 92, and we are still paying them. Mm -hmm. So at least, if for nothing at all, I can tell you that up till now, right, we have not defaulted. Are more people getting on board the scheme? Are more people getting on board the scheme? Are more people registering, <laughs> making contributions? Oh, yes, yes, but it's not, the, the, uptake, the uptake is not as high as I would like, right? Because, because that, that old narrative that the SNIT scheme is not good, huh? That livestock still, farming is it, better. It's still, that livestock farming is better. It's still there, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I just recently caught your attention because I said somebody's making 140 something, right? Yeah. Thousand. Because prior to that, you. Because were not, it's only people are getting 300. Yeah, 400. 300 that you were hearing. People join long queues, right? Old people who actually have to go and be roaming in banks, getting yes. simple things. And it's, it's an issue that I'm coming to because. I know you had a point to make. Yeah, so, 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 point, so, yes. so on that point, mm -hmm. so what I was saying was that, now, as people live longer, right, the cost of the scheme is going to be higher. Okay. Right? And so... Is that all good? Well, long life it, it, is good, I right? like people to live the very long. Activity is a stand, is a determinant I, and of I pray, of life. And I pray to God that, that we, we, everybody we lives very long. The, right? The yeah. And so... Uh, in managing the scheme, yeah. we then need to tweak it. We may need to tweak it such that we can get monies to pay the larger bills. Because the about scheme... contributing, right? Yeah, you are but, investing. Yeah, so but, we shouldn't care about investment. Oh, no, we should care about getting yes, the money. Yes. So why are we being told so, about sustainability? So when, so, so when you are putting together yeah. any scheme, any financial scheme, right? Mm -hmm. You make certain assumptions. Yeah. So when uh, uh, the scheme was being put together, even under, uh, before this new law came in and was changed. Yeah. The life expectancy after pension was, uh, they were expect, the, 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 the expectation was that people live till 72. That's true. So under PND's law 247, the guaranteed period for pension payments was 12 years. Then came 2010, seven sixes came, and it makes the guaranteed period 15 years because you, you realize that people are living longer, right? Okay, and then they rejigged the scheme a little bit by tweaking, you know, how long you have to contribute and so on and so forth, right? Because whenever you pull money into this vehicle, you have to design that vehicle such that the vehicle can throw off enough cash or the vehicle is robust enough to be able to pay the liabilities that uh, that vehicle will have to support. So the answer to your question is that you cannot, if you go ahead and you squander the monies today, tomorrow I cannot pay you. Oh, I see. Right? If but, I go and but, I squander the money, the, money. the answer is no. 
So, let me tell you, you know for a fact that you're not okay. spending the money. So, for example, let's talk about Who's how... independently reviewing the books in this case? We have a regulator, the NPRA. Mm. They have been actively on us, and I think I commend the current NPRA uh, uh, boss. It's, just, it's just one government institution and another government institution. Oh, but, but you know... You one have independent eyes, predominantly in civil society, for example, to look through and tell us that this is how you're supposed to go. Because if it falls... It, we, have, we have auditors, okay. right? Okay. So there are auditors. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you believe in uh, Domelovo when he was there. Very much so. Uh -huh. So they, right now, the Auditor General is the one who audits it, mm -hmm. right? And, okay. and they've been auditing us for the past three, four years. Yes. Right? Recently, so, they made some damning verdicts. Well, they, I mean, I think the people in the media, you try to make it sensational. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so, so they will say things. And uh, it will be maybe uh, an investment that, that uh, is, um, you know, challenged. And it's not, it's not all, it's not lost. And then they will, they will entreat management to, um, you know, take steps to try and make certain recoveries. Okay. Not only that, in terms of oversight, there is also a board. Right? That's in charge of it. And, and, and in that I'm board, trying to move it faster yeah, because yeah. they say my time is almost okay. up. But I have many questions I need you to answer for yes. me. So you're saying this is not collapsing anytime soon? No, not anytime there some, soon. There are some corporate but, issues. But we have there are some to... customer service issues that, yeah. for example, one of the brightest in this company raised this. For Joseph Akable, he doesn't understand why, for example, he registered onto your program and he's not getting the kind of communication that he gets with um, private pension fund managers. Consistent text and everything to do with that. Why, why, why is there a vacuum when it comes to customer service in this area in the 21st century? Well, uh, Ray, I think I would say that SNET has come a very long way. Okay. Uh, we are trying to be very transparent, and I think we've come a long way to be transparent. Okay. I think that uh, uh, most SNIT contributors mm -hmm. would attest that they receive quarterly statements, electronic statements. Uh, if there is any SNIT contributor that is not receiving their quarterly statements, it is probably because their email address with us is not good. Oh, I see. And so uh, let me take your, uh, your plat the opportunity on your platform to uh, uh, urge all Senate contributors to update their uh, information with us and make sure that they have uh, valid email addresses on and they will get their statements. Mm. Now, I'm asking one question on this Senate and NIA numbers. Many were impressed that you did some extension in that particular area. Should we expect another extension? No. Why not? But it's not dependent on the review of what has happened over the period. Well, there be a blanket no. Well, okay. So let me we are let me explain. We are committed to serving our members and clients. Okay. And trying to cause as minimal disruption as possible in the way we deliver service. Right. Mm -hmm. What we are trying to do with the NIA card is to even allow us to serve you better. Okay. Right. Um, for us. If you are able to merge your SNIT and your NIA card, you just need one card, which is the NIA card, which is the superior card, mm -hmm. to come and do anything that you want to do with SNIT. With your SNIT card, you then still have to produce your NIA card in addition because it's required by law. Right. So we are just trying to encourage you to simplify your life because the law requires that you have that NIA card. Now, we at SNET decided to extend because, you know, we were concerned about, mainly concerned about new entrants onto the scheme. So if you are coming to register onto the scheme as a new person, we would require you to have your NIA card. And if you didn't have an NIA card, then we'll be a bit handicapped in registering you, right? So we said that, okay, now that you see, the NIA has set up district registration offices all over the country, okay? Which, under a normal day, if you go to some of the, you know, uh, not so, not the, 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 the non-city centers, okay. you'll find out that the offices right. are empty and they are not as crowded That's as what is in there. So, I, we've extended it to June. Yeah. 
we believe that between now and June, when the SIM card registration and all that stuff is over, you know, uh, a lot of people, I mean, this backlog would have been worked out. A lot of the crowding too that you are seeing in those NI offices, that there are people who have also registered and they even didn't go to pick up their cards. Oh, I see. So it's not all about registration. There are cards that have been, been picked up. So we think that by June, there will be the, 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 the logjam would have eased a little bit and we'll be able to continue, uh, we'll be able to offer the service. The registration of uh, people are not going to end, it's in perpetuity, okay. because the, uh, um, the offices are there in perpetuity. There's a last question, Maxim, before I move on. I frankly do not know how much I'm going to get when I retire, but do you know, as Nit boss, what your person is likely to be? Between the 142 and the 300, which band are you likely to belong? I don't know. It, it depends. You don't on, know? You no, know, it, it will depend on what oh, I... But, I mean, with but, all your competence. But, but I don't know. With, when you sit and have the data available to you, but I, I mean, are you saying that it's an but, invasion of your no, privacy? No, no, no. Maybe so. No. But you no. should be able to tell me that. No, for all you are know. Are you closer to the 142 or closer to the 300? For, for all you know, tomorrow, yes. His Excellency, the President, will decide to appoint me to a much higher office, maybe where I earn a lot more. Okay. Right. <laughs> in which case, uh, in which case, so, so my, so new, my new how's salaries. It, how's, how's it in, looking? In, in this case, my new salaries is going to start. It was going to distort my uh, <laughs> uh, previous uh, period. Yes, my best three years. Yes. Right? So, but all I know is that you get six, up to sixty yeah. percent of your highest salaries that you have insured with SNET, and that would apply to me and you as well. Many thanks to you, Doc. And uh, Dr. John Ofori Tinkran is the SNIT boss. We looked at SNIT, matters arising from the NI SNIT card registrations, and also looked at the sustainability issues that have been raised recently and how I could get closer to 142,000 when I finally retire. Hope it was useful to you. Thank you so much for joining us.